Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done a video. Uh, mostly that's been weather. It's just been terrible here. Uh, haven't had a chance to image very much of anything. Um, normally, you know me from planetary imaging, but planetary season is drawing to a close. And uh, I do a little bit of EAA, Electronically Assisted Astronomy. Uh, I also do some astrophotography. Try to do it on the cheap. I like doing things on the cheap. And uh, I just want to talk a little bit more about uh, chromatic aberration correction in SharpCap. Um, so this is live. I'm, I'm out in uh, my backyard. Even as we speak, it is a full moon. <laughs> it's really not the, not the night to be doing this, but uh, I want to show it to you anyway. Uh, the full moon is about uh, not quite 90 degrees away from uh, the Horsehead Nebula here, so there's a lot of light pollution, so again, it's, it's not great. Also, the, uh, the telescope, if you want to call it that, that I'm using to image this with is a $50 30 millimeter guide scope. It's not very good. <laughs> it, it can't focus stars very well. Um, at all, anywhere in the field. <laughs> but uh, it serves its purpose, which is I wanted to show you um, chromatic aberration correction actually live. This is a real refracting telescope. It's a 30 millimeter f4, so it's very fast. Uh, a chromatic, it's just a hunk of glass. It's one lens. It's not a doublet. Uh, it's just a hunk of glass and it suffers very bad chromatic aberration but I've done a couple of things one I am using a number eight pale yellow filter uh, and I I can't remember if it's uh, Apertura or Agena or something like that um, Astromania maybe one of those A uh, suppliers but it's a pale number eight uh, filter and that the purpose of that is just to filter out the defocus blue light and uh, mostly keep it from uh, polluting your red and green channels through color bleed. Because in chromatic aberration correction in sharp gap, which you'll see right down here, we actually throw out the blue channel and we reconstruct it from the red and green channels. Uh, there's a few different options here. I've talked about them before. Uh, the solar system one is great for uh, broadband objects. Uh, it's called solar system, but it's great for star colors. It's great for galaxies, obviously planets. It's great for the moon. It's any any broadband continuum object. That's gonna that's gonna be the best option. The two deep sky versions, uh, those are really meant to deal mostly with H alpha emission. So we see in the Horsehead Nebula, we've got some H alpha emission that outlines the Horsehead Nebula itself, which is this dark uh, nebula right here. Um, mostly, I like to use Deep Sky 1. Uh, it does a little bit better at preserving star colors uh, than Deep Sky 2. But you, again, it's all to taste. You try them all. But I did want to mention one important thing about the chromatic aberration reduction, and that's where it is located which is in pre-processing. This is done to the frames as they come in before they go to live stacking. That has an important consequence. If you're used to doing deep sky imaging uh, or EAA with sharp cap uh, and live stacking, you may be used to leaving your white balance controls neutral. On a ZWO camera, these would be W red and W blue. There's no W green. Uh, and you would maybe leave them on 50-50, which is the neutral settings. And then you would adjust your color balance here in the live stacking histogram area on the right here. Well, if you do that with chromatic aberration correction, you're not going to get the best result because what happens here in the reconstruction of the blue channel it works really well when the red and green channels 
are correctly white balanced relative to each other. And that means you really want to white balance your camera, at least the red and blue channels, remember we're throwing out the blue, before you apply your chromatic aberration correction, which will happen next, and then before you get into your live stacking histogram over here. If you don't do that, this is a, this camera, by the way, is a, it's a br brand new, inexpensive camera that I picked up. It's a SV Boney 305C. I have a couple of the old 305s. I really like them. They're a fun little camera, but they're old. They use the IMX 290 sensor. They're kind of noisy. The 305C uses the new uh, IMX 662 chip, and it is a much lower noise chip and I saw some good results people were having with it, so I picked it up. And indeed, it is a way way cleaner camera. I like it a lot. Uh, so it's an uncooled camera. Um, it's best suited for what I'm do using it for here, which is electronically assisted astronomy, things like that. Uh, it's a very small chip. It's not suited for, um, you know, large format astrophotos. Um, you get a big camera, a big cooled camera for one of those, like a, a 533 or a 2600 or something like that. Uh, but anyway, I, I picked it up, um, and it's an SV Bowden camera, so the white controls here, the neutral value is 128. And when I first started out tonight, I was imaging at 128, 128, 128, and boy, the results just did not look good. They, the colors were just terrible. I had bright yellow stars and it was just mm, the color of m42 didn't look right uh, the horse had nebula and flame didn't look right the stars didn't look right nothing looked right and i couldn't figure it out and then i realized oh of course this needs to be done to a white balanced image at least to have the red and green channels in balance so you need to white balance your camera ahead of time so you know what in particular on a ZWO camera, W red should be, um, I don't know what the white balance controls are on the uh, QHY cameras, I don't know what they are on the Player One cameras, but there are some white balance controls. And you need to have your camera white balanced ahead of time before you apply this to get the best result. And you can look over here at the image, and if you've seen uh, an image of the Horsehead Nebula, in fact, um, I have, let me just grab this is over here on my Astro bin somewhere. There it is. An old picture that I took. And you can see the colors are red and then kind of yellow for the flame nebula. And nice kind of white bluish stars because they're not blown out by chromatic aberration. And you can see, yeah, we've got very natural looking red uh, H-alpha here. Again, this is... <laughs> A $50 hunk of glass <laughs> in front of a $100 camera. Uh, but these are very natural looking colors. There's no sign of chromatic aberration uh, in the image because we've filtered out that blue light with a pale yellow number eight filter and we're using deep sky number one chromatic aberration correction for our stacking in SharpCap. And this is in pre-processing, so if I was saving these frames to disk, I'm, you know, I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm, I have no interest in, in stacking the images from this terrible little scope in post. But uh, if I were, the frames that hit the disk would have this correction applied to them. So, uh, again, white balance your camera before you apply chromatic aberration correction and before you get into live stacking. Because if you leave this neutral, you're not going to have good results when you get in here. Okay, I'll see you next time.